Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 6 of our FTV Skies Expert Mode Let's Play. Today, we're actually in the future. So let me bring you back to the past real quick. So unfortunately, I've been looking around JEI and I don't think making Whirlis Briggs is very in our ballpark at the moment without having to get Wilden Horns or a large amount of Amethysts. We can make the Amethyst Golem. However, that is not my plan for right now. I've actually shifted my plans just a slight bit, and I actually want to go make a Reaper Generator. Now, the Reaper Generator, if you go into the quest book, is up here in Powering Up, which is just in the primary guide. The Reaper Generator are a very unique way of generating both FE and killing mobs. So you put some Soul Catalyst, which we made before, and a Soul Catalyst is just made by smelting Soul Powder, which is just Glowstone, and it will start dealing damage to surrounding mobs. There are also multiple upgrade runes that you can enhance its effects with. So what's really cool about the Reaper Generator, in addition to powering our Vitalic Source Link by killing the mobs, this will fuel our source production, which will fuel all of our magic. So that's our Whirlis Sprigs, which needs source, our anything that requires an imbuement chamber or the rituals, that will provide source with that so we can use our gunpowder, right of flash, redstone, anything you get from the mobs to turn into ingots. So that's four ingots worth of production solved with one block. That is also all of the elements these I'll turn it into the essences, right? So all the elemental shards can turn into essences because once again, we will have the source to create them. And also, since it provides forge energy, it will allow us to power all of our like base, all of our power, right? So I think this is actually the most insane block in the game. I hope everyone is abusing it that's playing this pack. So I'm going to go ahead and get myself here to make one of those. And we will look into all of the rune upgrades and see what we can make afterwards. All right, so I've gone ahead and made my soul steel block, which is actually really easy now because all you have to do is throw a block of iron inside the soul engulfer. And now we'll go ahead and take this and throw it back inside the soul engulfer and get ourselves a reaper generator. Okay, now that we have a soul steel block, what we have to do is we actually have to go ahead and make a new soul engulfer, which uses compressed soul powder blocks rather than the ones we're currently using, and also uses soul slate in the corners rather than the other stone, which is right down there. And I lost the block. But yeah, so this is other stone and soul powder block. That won't work. If you throw this in there, it will make, it will just burn up, right? So what you have to go do is you have to make a second one, which uses soul slate and compressed soul soul powder box. So I'm just going to go gather all those resources and I guess we'll just put it over in the corner here. I don't think it can interfere with the middle so we'll use this corner over here and I'll go ahead and make that real quick. All right so we can go ahead and place down our soul slate in the corners. Take the compressed soul powder blocks which are actually very expensive. I didn't realize you need 144 well what I thought it was 144 glowstone for the four of them. However you do get two soul powder per glowstone so i overshot my number just a slight bit by doubling it however you put the four in the middle you place your soul sand down and you light it on fire so it's pretty it's the exact same premise as this one however the blocks are slightly different and now we can take our soul steel block throw it in there and we should get a reaper generator oh i didn't realize the entire thing would be destroyed in the process that's interesting though. It kind of, it uses the blocks around it to form the Reaper generator rather than just being a block that magically turns into a generator. I like that. That's actually really cool. Good job, FTB dip, uh, FTB team. Sorry. So yeah, we can go ahead and throw that. Actually, no, we need the soul powder back. <laughs> we need this back and we can go ahead and smelt this. Also, I had some in here already. Also, it ate more blocks. Wow. I really should have checked my ME system, well, my Ars Magica system before I did that. Anyways, so now that we got the Reaper Generator, there is a quest you can turn in, and you get a choice of which rune you want. So we can't, unfortunately, get the Obidus rune. However, we can get either Ruficiat, Humano, Delado, or Spiritus, or Velocit uh, Velocitas. So Velocitas will decrease the cooldown, which is kind of useful. Spiritus not quite what we want gives player drop skills instead of forge energy which one's the hardest to make so let's look up at reaper i assume that's going to be the mod yeah here we go so the proficiat rune humana rune it's actually a totem of the dying so that's kind of probably the hardest velocitas is rabbit foot spiritus is a wither skull which is the one i obitus oh we can actually make the obitus rune ourselves so that's not a problem because we have the echo shards from the quest over there right so actually this is the easiest one for us to make redstone blocks actually pretty easy too humana runes probably 
probably the best bet just because like what are the odds we kill an evoker and get a totem of the undying and what was the humana rune do sorry i gotta check again the humana rune get energy from hurting players oh that's not very useful we don't want to hurt ourselves so it Rufisiad is probably um, hmm Rufisiad redstone easy Obidus we can make Humana we don't want at all Velado Velocitas so it's probably Velocitas right because Spiritus rune isn't great is it gives player kill drops instead of forge energy we kind of do want the forge energy decreased cooldown is probably the best but no if we can get insta kill you know what we'll take the fellow seat test room because i doubt we're ever getting a rabbit we'll probably eventually get a wither skull bit of debate going on in my head however i think that's fine so we're taking velocitas and we'll take you perfect and we'll actually go ahead and make ourselves an obidus rune while we're here and you should be able to stack them we'll make a rufisiat rune which is a block of redstone i believe you can put multiple runes per thing and then a delato rune is that what we wanted what does delato do it increases the range i'm not sure how big the range actually is but we'll go ahead and make ourselves nine more of these can't hurt right like it's not it's not gonna kill us to do this go ahead and make a delato rune as well and that uses up the rest of our soul slate so we actually can't make the spiritus anyways nor nor could we in the first place so there we go and now we just got to go ahead and smelt up all this soul powder and we can get ourselves we don't have any gold and get ourselves our reaper generator up and running so i'll be back once this is all smelted up okay i've collected 42 soul catalysts it's not the most but we had the rest smelting the furnaces still i'm gonna place down this reaper generator you know what on top of this is maybe fine okay cool it has a 1 million fe storage buffer interesting what i don't i don't really understand can we how many runes can we put in oh we can only fit four or can they go over here no it doesn't seem so okay so it fits only four runes so that's perfect we only have the four so it has eight max range instant death it works every 60 seconds maybe and it requires 100 fe per tick and if i throw those in there oh that's how it works okay so if i turn this guy on it should kill nice oh and i need an item collector obviously how much soul catalyst is this use 38 okay oh so it kills everything it doesn't just kill the one mob awesome okay and it's dropping soul powder so that's actually really useful i go ahead and pick all that up decent amount of drops okay 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 i i don't mind that i thought it was going to put them inside the reaper generator itself so that's why i was going to go ahead and make myself a starbuncle which i still might do to actually put the soul catalyst back inside because we need to take the soul powder out and then put the soul powder into a furnace once it gets collected right and then we gotta put the soul powder or sorry the soul catalysts back inside so we're gonna figure out a little system here and i'll be back once i do i've gone ahead and made myself the advanced item collector from item collectors mod was <laughs> pretty standard it's simple it's just some obsidian and ender eye and then obsidian and an ender pearl and you get all those things pretty easy so far so the blaze powder once again spun the blaze ender pearl enderman and then the obsidian is magma blocks or i got mine from one of the cataclysm boss like arenas in the nether which is really useful i got a bunch of obsidian for free there so if i want to use a star bungle to remove items specifically i have to get an item scroll set to allow in a blank parchment which is mage bloom fibers oh interesting the only way to get mage bloom fibers is actually using a crusher from occultism okay we can't actually do this just yet I do want to make a uh, crusher eventually, so that will be on the list. The foliate, yeah, this one's pretty easy. It's just soul steel, copper, iron plates, and andesite alloys. This is actually really easy to make, so we'll probably go ahead and do that next episode, and we'll set up starbuncles, or sorry, we'll set up a cultist in the next episode, see how that's going, or we might do it later this episode. I actually don't know how long the runtime is. I'm recording this on two different days, so I don't actually know how much time's left in this video okay will that kill boom one shot i think i want to put this on a timer like i want to put this on a timer to how much soul catalyst like i want mobs to spawn right and then i want to import a soul catalyst right because it only uses one per kill right i can't take them oh yeah i can because yeah i think that'll be the best way to do this is put one in wait for the mobs to build on Put, sorry wait for the mobs to build up stick one in why is it raining right here by the way does my rain generator not protect this far out maybe not but yeah so we have plenty of source already i've let this thing run for what like five minutes we have three full source uh four full source jars which is actually insane and yeah this vitalic source thing will provide us with plenty of source not a worry 
And yeah, I think we can go ahead and do a small little timer setup with this guy and have it only put in one single soul catalyst every, I don't know, 10 seconds or so. So it lets the mobs build up, puts one in, kills them all, and then it should generate enough soul powder after it like picks up speed, right? Yeah, it should like generate enough soul powder, right? So if I let mobs build up, let's count. Okay, that's about, I don't know, eight seconds. We'll throw our soul powder in. Get 14. Yeah, it gives 16. So on average, I think this should work. If we do it every eight seconds, we take this out, put it into a furnace, soul powder, 16 to 21. Yeah, this will definitely keep up. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and make a filtering system for this, hopefully with the items I can. And this will take it out, put it into a furnace. The furnace will smelt it and throw it back in here on a eight second timer or a 10 second timer. We'll see how it works. And yeah, it should never run out of soul catalyst and this will produce us infinite energy and infinite source and it'll be self-sustaining so that's really cool i'm gonna go ahead and turn the mob farm off kill the last bit of mobs and yeah we're gonna go ahead and set something up i guess okay so small progress update i haven't done much yet because i'm still trying to figure out what i have available in this mod that will allow me easy item transport on redstone signal because a hopper won't work unless i do like an and gate or whatever they're called to actually like stop the signal permanently and then flick it off with a redstone clock which i can do if i need to i'm just trying to find a better solution with the mods available however i have this starbuncle here which i made with here let me look it up here we go so i got four electric from or yeah i got four electrum from one of the chests in either the nether or one of the villages so we were lucked out getting four electrum i should really not have had that and then the starbuckle shard i also got but you can also just chuck one of the starbuckles that spawn on your island a gold nugget so that got me my starbuckle now i said that i probably couldn't get a blake parchment however i had four of them from chests once again from villages or the nether villages and i gave it an item scroll and to set an item scroll you use a scribe table you put the item scroll on it and then you shift right click the item you want to allow so i shift right clicked a soul powder i set the allow scroll on him and i told him to take from this chest whenever i get soul powder in it to throw it into this guy up here so now that there's soul powder in there see it disappeared it ends up here now so if i take 29 out put it in here this guy will say oh we're gonna take it out and he'll throw it inside see there's usually an animation i'm not sure why there's not but yeah it'll automatically throw it inside there and now i just want to set up i tried to item transport it so i realize these don't have redstone signals so i can't do it this way but i have made myself a redstone clock here that will hopefully tick every i don't know we will probably set it to the max tick rate and see how that goes and then we'll see if we can do as a hopper i might have to lock the hopper and then set it to flick off with a redstone torch or something i'll figure it out but that is just a current progress update at the moment so we're getting pretty close to the solution and then yeah this thing will be infinitely powered as long as i have a fuel source over here i just realized that and i don't get coal or anything that can use power unless i use bows but that's not really not really a good solution, right? Power uh, using bows to fuel fire is 1.5 items, and we're not going to get enough bows to actually do that. So we got to figure out a source of uh, fuel, and also we got to figure out a storage system eventually. But yeah, I just want to give you guys a little progress update of where I am, and yeah, we'll fix this up. Okay, I'm back not too long after the last clip. I went ahead again into the FTB Discord. I asked some help on how I would find a redstone tickable item transfer early in the game. However, I was overcomplicating for no reason all i had to do was move remove the velocitas rune and this only ticks every 120 ticks rather than every 60 so mobs actually get to build up before it ticks to kill them which is great and this thing will never run out of soul catalysts after the mobs are killed so it's actually self-sustaining and the way my mobs are spawning so fast once again courtesy of the ftb discord i use this simple method of using two observers pointing inside of each other and Basically what this does, it just creates an infinite timer and it pulses constantly. Redful Dirt actually works is as it's pulsed, it will refresh like the spawning so each time a piece of dreadful dirt oh that loot bee is just not wanting to be claimed today is it well i'm not going to go chase it after the thing i don't think the drops are that good from the loot bees unless it comes back up to the surface then we'll lasso him real quick okay we got him but yeah so like i was saying the loot bees not wow this is the same hat we've gotten every time yeah i don't th i don't think the drops are that great i'm gonna be honest so as i was saying 
before I was really interrupted by this loot bee here. When the dreadful dirt pulses or a redstone pulse is added to it, it basically refreshes the spawn counter so it says, I can spawn a mob now. I'm going to wait to spawn a mob. I can spawn a mob now. That's basically the timer and it just repeats like that forever and forever. And what the redstone pulses do, it basically resets the timer instantly and says, hey, you can spawn a mob. Hey, you can spawn a mob. Hey, you can spawn a mob. And they'll continuously do that over and over and over. So that's really nice. Our whirly spree here is farming a decent amount. And once again, I said I want to get some more of these, but we're locked behind the arcane villager right now. And we got to actually wait till we get some more amethysts farmed up before we can get a no, don't want to do that before we can actually get our whirly spree potentially. But yeah, so this is an automatic farm set up for this guy here. Now my sorting system isn't great. I do want to go ahead and make our a proper sorting system next episode, which will involve using maybe a crate if I can't do you know what I'll probably do a vault all right so I've cooked up a plan of what we're going to actually go do in this section here I'm going to make a big create vault similar to the one I have over at our main storage system I'm going to make another storage lectern and bring a single bookworm over here and that will be able to just read the data inside the storage vault because there's no way with create to actually read the data and then we'll just stick the item collector directly on it the starbuncle will take the items out similar to he's doing now and this guy here is just on whitelist and regulate to only put one item in at a time so that's all really easy however the only issue with the reaper generator i've noticed is if it's full on power so 1 million rf inside of its buffer it won't actually continue to kill mobs. So we're going to have to look up a way to get a capacitor of some sort to actually use the power consistently. Maybe we just put an energy like a void tank on it i'm not sure we'll figure out something okay future me is back i've gone ahead and moved my mob farm from this corner over to this section over here now the reason i've gone ahead and done this is if you grab a slime bucket or sorry if you grab a slime and you put it inside of a bucket the small slimes only you can actually see where slime chunks are so if we turn on the chunk batteries you see this is a chunk this is where our other one was the slime like the slime will bounce up and down in your inventory if it's in slime chunk so right here we're in a slime chunk so I could have put the mob farm over here. Wasn't really gonna work, you know? Like th these corners don't really match up. So I kept flying around like, like this, going back and forth, each quadrant. I was like, oh dang it, none of these sections have slimes other than that one corner. So I'm like, I went over, I'll fly around the corners again. Flew around over here. Turns out this corner is actually, well, this middle section here is actually a slime chunk. So I went ahead, tore down the thing, rebuilt it with the schematic cannon, and now it's over here. And I've done a bit of modifications to when you last saw. It. I'm still using the Starbuncle to place Soul Powder in here, which isn't working. Gotta figure out why. But yeah, so Soul Powder will automatically go in here. It'll transfer automatically into the item transporter once it's cooked. I'm using a Force Furnace now with a Speed Core upgrade, which we got from the Nether, Nether Loot. So this thing cooks immensely fast. But yeah, I've gone ahead and I'm voiding the power by using the Unlimited Cosmic Power quest line, which is probably not the best way to do this. There's, I think there's actually a trash can that that voids energy yeah this ultimate trash can can void energy however or even the energy one sorry but yeah this energy trash can can void energy i just figured may as well use it to like start the completion of this ultimate cosmic power quest because you actually have to turn in 100 billion fe at some point and i said hey, you know what i'll just do that for now but yeah so our soul reaper is working over here as usual i've gone ahead and set up my essence drawers so that i can automatically craft essence just right behind the mana here and use the mana or source i guess and in here you'll see that we have a new storage lectern connected to this item vault Item vault pulls all the items in we can see them all monitored over here i i think this just works really nice like all all of this just it just works right so i gotta fix the starbuncle putting items in here but that's just a minor detail but he should be able to do it perfectly fine. We can turn it on and off as before. And yeah, we got this ahead and done. So what I've done in between that and this episode is I've gone ahead and made automatic gravel, sand, and dust because making this manually at this point in the game is absolutely ridiculous and no one should be doing it. So what, I had, what I've gone ahead and done is used netherite auto hammers, which are very expensive. And I could have used pedestals from the pedestals mod and material generators. However, I had the netherite, I had the diamonds, I had the gold, the iron, and yeah, I just made six netherite hammers and each one of them will process from a tier four generator differently. So cobble will go in. This one will automatically input into the blue section 
and it will auto output the red section and that's the work signal here so it inputs the blue outputs the red so on and so forth three times cobbled down or sorry three times hammered down cobble dust two times sand one time gravel this will allow us to make a lot much like a lot easier concrete which is really nice because we need concrete to expand our entire base and this will be next episode but yeah so we need a bunch of concrete what's really nice about this is the fact that the sand and gravel will be used to make concrete as well as a lot of other things down the line main thing is concrete though because i really want to make a giant area over here as you see i've removed all of my create stuff over here and the water wheels everything right i've removed all of it and what i want to do is i want to get a giant giant create factory over in this section of the base probably matching something similar to that in size because we need create for everything in the quest book coming up so we need diesel generators right and then for the mana pools and all of this stuff or sorry for all the coke bricks and kiln bricks and blast bricks all of these require like recipe setup for like automation through create so there's a lot of create upcoming in the quest book and then the next chapter as well a lot of the stuff also requires create to do so we're gonna go ahead and make a giant factory over here next episode just for great so between episodes i'm going to set up a, i'm gonna farm a lot of resources as much as i can and hopefully once we come into the next episode we'll be able to build out the factory of our dreams both producing cake power iron gold everything you can imagine it's going to be in a giant create factory over here it's going to be a messy contraption of joy all right so i know that was a much shorter episode than usual However, with all this preparation we've done with our mob farm automation and everything, we should be good to go to make our giant create factory of our dreams next episode and get our base finally built up rather than just this tiny little shell. I hope you guys did enjoy. Nevertheless, if you did, leave a comment down below if there was something you learned today or if there's something you'd like to teach me. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And if you don't want to miss anything else in the future, make sure to hit that subscribe button. See you next time. Bye-bye.